Welcome back to Resonance in Organic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue with what we were doing, and that's just a bunch of resonance examples. This is the molecule that we're picking up with here. So let's work on determining the resonance structures for this. All right, so there's several things we can do here. All right, um, we could either, so remember the rules that we had. Um, I'll go ahead and put them up here just for you so you can see. The rules that we had for determining whether something has resonance or not, or what component of a molecule has resonance, is we apply this series. We say double, single, double, single, double, single, double, da, 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 da. Another one we can have is we can have double, single, lone pair, single, double, okay? The other one we can have is double single carbocation single double and so forth and what we what we saw was that because each of these set of pi electrons because in this one because they're separated ultimately from the double bonds they're separated from each other by one single bond we would say that this lone pair is in resonance with that double bond this lone pair is in resonance with that double bond and so forth all of these pi electrons these double bonds are in resonance with each other the other thing also is the carbocation here in the middle because it is separated from the double bonds by a single bond that the double bonds pi electrons are in resonance with the carbocation also okay and also these double bonds these ones are in resonance with each other okay it's a system okay a system of pi electrons and orbitals okay so what we do is when we look at the molecule we just indicate all the single double um, carbocations lone pairs all that stuff all right so here's a double here single lone pair single double all right those are the bonds there. Does that look like anything we have up here? Well, sure, it looks like this one, the second one. Double, single, lone pair, single, double, meaning that these are in resonance with each other. The question is how? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw resonance structures. So now suppose I threw these threw this lone pair onto the single bond there. All right, That's going to force these pi electrons onto that oxygen. All right? So what resonance structure do I get when I do that? Well, this left carbonyl doesn't change, but I get this right here. Now that oxygen has a negative charge. And now instead of having two lone pairs, it has three. Why is that? Well, if I consider this pi electron, these pi electrons to be the purple right there, they essentially become these two pi electrons right there. If I consider these pi electrons right there, when they kick up onto the oxygen, they become these two electrons right there, okay? Remember, a pi bond is just two electrons. These are the two electrons right there, all right? And then I just have this carbon group right there. Now, suppose, for example, instead, I had kicked these pi electrons to the left, right? Again, you know, we have double, single, lone pair, single, double, right? If I kick them to the left, these pi electrons go onto the single bond right there, and that's going to kick these pi electrons. Maybe they are, we'll do them in blue, maybe these pi electrons right here end up going onto this oxygen right there, right? So my resonance structure, when I draw it, One, two, three, four. I'm going to put those blue ones right here. They were on this pi. There were a pi bond. Now there are two electrons on this oxygen. And I have this and that. Okay. And I could indicate all the lone pairs there. Okay. So those are the resonance structures for this compound right there. All right. You'll learn more about compounds like this very late in organic two. Okay. More detail on those. All right. Here's another example, okay? Another one illustrating the same kind of point. What do I have here? Well, I have a double bond, single lone pair. And if we look at that, that certainly satisfies this part right here, double bond, single lone pair. So those are in resonance with each other. So all I will do is I will force this lone pair in there on the single bond, and that's going to force this, this, these pi electrons onto the oxygen. If I maybe draw these pi electrons in orange, all right, then when I draw the resonance structure, okay, 
then what I'm going to get is the two lone pairs that are already on that oxygen, and then I'm going to have the other lone pair in orange. That's Those were those pi electrons right there. Okay. Another thing I could also do to help you, if you wanted to look at it this way, if these two, this lone pair, these two electrons were blue, then the pi bond right here would also be blue. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, at least abstractly or conceptually. All right. Hopefully what you're seeing here in these first few examples, we did a few in the previous video, but also in this video, is notice that if you have a lone pair that's in resonance with the other parts, a lone pair, and it's, again, it has to be, noticed separated from the double bonds by a single bond. If you have a lone pair like that, you preferentially want to try to move the lone pair first, right? You're not moving the double bond first. You're not moving carbocations, if there are any. You move the lone pair first. So if you're trying to draw a resonance structure and you determine that the lone pair is in resonance with a double bond or something, try moving the lone pair first and then see what happens, and it's probably going to get you the right answer, okay? Now, though, we're going to switch gears, and we're going to deal with a little bit of a, little bit of a harder problem, and that's when we have a carbocation, okay? So here's a carbocation. Let's go ahead and label this compound and see what we get. All right, so we have double, single, double, single, double, single carbocation. Does that satisfy anything that we saw up here? Well, it does, right? If I were to extend this pattern out a little further, maybe double, single, double, single, double, single carbocation, then essentially this part right there, that's, the, that's what this compound is down here, right? So that means this whole thing is a system of resonance. All right. Now, we're going to have a different rule when we deal with carbocations and pi bonds. Let's go ahead and indicate the generic rule that we learned in a previous video. So if I have something like, so let me draw it a little better than that. If I have something like this, Okay. Now I'm no longer moving lone pairs. So the thing I'm going to move is now the pi bond. Okay. In fact, if you wanted to look at it this way, the preferential um, treatment you give is to move lone pairs first, and then you move um, pi bonds, and then if you have to, carbocations, but you don't move those at all. So in general, lone pairs you move, and if you don't have that, then you try moving pi bonds. And since we know the pi bond, the double bond, is in resonance with the carbocation, there's no lone pair, so you have to move the pi bond. And in this case, if you wanted to find this resonance structure for this simple compound, all you would do is move the pi bond up there, right? The pi bond, again, attacks the single bond, essentially. You could think of it that way. Then when you draw the resonance structure, you get this. Essentially, every time, the carbocation is going to skip one carbon and then go over to the next one. So notice, it sort of skips this one and then goes over to that one, and that's where you see the carbocation. Okay? And that's sort of the basics of how you deal with it on an abstract or conceptual level. All right, so let's look at this. It's actually going to take a few drawings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pi bond, move it over here, right? What do I get? Get this. Now remember, carbocation skips one carbon and then it goes over here. So that means my carbocation is going to go right there. Sometimes when I think of these pi bonds moving over to the carbocation, the way I think about it is it's sort of like if you looked at this part of the molecule just right there, that part just right there, the pi bond is essentially like, if you're looking at it, kind of like the page of a book, right? When you want to go to the next page, you just turn the page. So you could sort of think of it as about if there was sort of a hinge right here or the spine of the book, a hinge, the pi bond sort of just rotates over on a conceptual level, okay? That's sort of the way I think about it, right? Then the carbocation is on this carbon. All right. So what do I do now? Well, I do a similar thing, okay? Here's a double bond. I can rotate it over, kind of like I'm flipping the page of a book, right? And what do I get? Well, now if I, if I rotate that pi bond over, okay, like flipping the page of a book, now it's over there. And then what did we say? Carbocation skips one carbon and then it goes on to the next carbon. So that means the carbocation should be on this position now, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm going to do the last resonance structure. 
do the same thing. Here's a pi bond right here, and I'm sort of going to turn the page, if you will, turn the page, move it over there. And now when I do this, okay, carbocation is going to move. It's going to skip one carbon and then go on to that one, essentially. Okay, then you end up with the carbocation on this. Notice again, the only arrows you're actually going to draw on an exam or homework are the green ones here. You don't actually show the carbocation with arrows moving. That's just to help you. It's just conceptually. The only thing you're going to actually draw on an exam are the ones in green. Okay, And then this is your last resonance structure, and that is all the resonance contributors. Okay, Here's kind of a challenge problem. Okay, a little challenging. Here what I have is I have a lone pair here, a carboanion or a carbanion, excuse me, an amine and then a carbocation right there. All right, so let's look at this. So maybe what I'd like to do at this point is um, label, you know, all the doubles and so forth. So here's a single carbocation, single lone pair, single lone pair. Now, I have this lone pair, single lone pair, and that really doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me because that's not one of the rules. However, if I look at lone pair, single carbocation, that's a, a lesser known rule and one that you won't run into as much, but it also is something. If you have a lone pair separated by, from a carbocation by a single bond, then there is resonance there. So what I can do is, is I can throw this lone pair onto the single bond, and what that actually does is it gets you this compound right here, or this contributor. Nothing happened with that lone pair, but now I have this right there and a positive charge in that nitrogen. Okay. Now what I do want to do is I want to re-indicate everything. So here's single, here's a double bond, single lone pair. Notice now I have a lone pair separated from a double bond by a single bond. I do have more resonance now also. So what I can do, I can throw this lone pair onto the single bond and kick this double bond onto that carbon, right? So essentially what's going to happen is double bond there now, nitrogen, positive charge, and now I have a lone pair there. Now, these technically are all resonance contributors. And actually, in some of these compounds up here, not all of them, some of these that we've done in previous examples, okay, in other videos, there are actually other contributors that you have that you can sort of, there's all sorts of things you can do. However, some of that, some of their contributions to the overall structure are so negligible that we really don't consider them. Case in point, this first one. And that's why this was sort of a challenge problem. This is something we're going to cover in a future video, probably a couple videos from now. Resonance contributors, where, a, where you have an atom that's devoid of an octet, they're not, they don't really contribute at all. Okay, they're not high contributors. In fact, in most cases, we don't even consider them. This carbon right here, notice it has a hydrogen on it. Okay, this carbon, let me indicate it in blue. This carbon has three bonds, and that's it in that resonance structure. It's a carbocation. In general, carbocations, unless, it, unless the molecule has to have one, like in the case above, this one has to have a carbocation, okay? Unless it reacts with something, it's, it's, it has one in every structure. However, if you have a choice in a resonance um, situation where you can get rid of the carbocation, where it doesn't actually have to happen, then you really don't even consider the one with the carbocation because it's so... Carbocations, when you have situations like that where you can quench the carbocation, the contribution to the overall structure really doesn't... It doesn't do anything. So in other words, we only consider these two to be valid resonance structures right there. Those are the only two that we really consider to be important because every atom in that has an octet. Okay, they all have their eight electrons, except for hydrogen, which has two. Okay, so another example, to very short example to illustrate this situation here in the first resonance contributors, when you have something like this, all right? So let's look at a, a, a resonance structure for this, all right? So what you could do, theoretically, is I could take these pi electrons, right? 
and I could I could you know I could stick them on to that carbon right there okay if I did that what I would get is the following a lone pair there and a carbo cation there now in this group right here this is propene every atom has an octet in the resonance contributor on the right it technically is a resonance contributor however this atom right here, this carbon, which has a hydrogen there, does not have an octet. And so basically this one on the right does not contribute at all. We truly don't even consider this one. So if we draw this compound, we're actually just going to assume it doesn't have a resonant structure and that's it. It's just propene. In other words, if we were to look at the contribution of each of these, this is essentially 100%. This is essentially 0%. This one doesn't contribute at all. So this is really the only structure we're concerned about for propene. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And in the next few videos, we'll do some uh, more complicated examples of determining resonance structures. So hope that helped. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you so much.